Hi folks, we don't have a ton of time, so I'm gonna dive right in here. So when I'm talking about flow, what I primarily talk about is collective flow, this idea of flow across an organization, right? It's involving all the activities and everything that needs to happen from the inception of an idea, maybe it's a customer request, all the way out to production, to the customer using the results of that effort. Um, but it's important to, to also talk about personal flow. I think that um, you know we are pretty familiar with the state of flow, the work of Mihai Chicks and Mihai, and um, this marriage, this this middle way between challenge and skill, where we feel like we're in the zone. And I think it's important to mention that because I don't think that we can reach that state without collective flow, without something um, helping us reach that state of flow unless we're off working on our own and increasingly that's less and less common right we're collaborating more and more often uh, with different teams even across teams across time zones across departments divisions even companies all the time so i think collective flow is becoming more and more important um, and the challenges of collaboration as a result but um, let's talk about a big challenge here let's talk about um, a pretty common case, which is these large organizations have very big ambitious goals to either transform their business or attack new markets or release new products or experiences. Um, and what that means is we end up with these gigantic backlogs of things that we need to do, right? Uh, what's going to make those initiatives happen? What's going to deliver those outcomes? Um, and usually, you know, that what happens when we look at those giant outcomes is we realize we're really not moving fast enough to get through any of this. Nothing's going to get done on time or, you know, in the time frame that we're hoping and we need to go faster. So the question becomes, how do we actually do that? How do we get to faster? How do we get to better outcomes, more consistent, sustainable, high performance, right? We don't want to burn out. We don't want to go faster for the sake of going faster or sacrificing quality or value in order to go faster. So how do we do that the right way? So I think this is uh, especially challenging and the idea of collaborative flow is challenging because we lack clarity on the whole interconnected network, the system behind what needs to get done. You know, the system be behind the, the current state all the things that are happening and everything that needs to come together in order to deliver value, but also, you know, clarity on how do we, how do we get to the next level? How do we improve our performance and our outcomes? And this is hard in collaborative environments because when we have multiple people, we have multiple perspectives, right? If we have eight people, they all have their own idea about what we should do, how we should do it. They have their own perspective their own experience, and that can mean that they all start moving in different directions, right? So we can't have that if we want collective flow, if we want everybody rowing in the same direction. Um, it's also challenging because we're missing models to make this easy. Like, it's not well known that we have ways of navigating these situations and connecting all the dots. Um, and we're developing these ways, but they're not well known. It's also tough because we can't just copy what other people are doing as much as we want to, as much as we want to just be like Netflix or Amazon or Walmart or whoever we want to follow, uh, whoever's doing this well, you can't just copy them because you have a unique situation. You have unique capabilities, um, your teams are unique, your situation, your market, the point in time, all these things are entirely unique to you. You are surrounded by unique terrain and you need to navigate that terrain based on where you're standing. And you need to bring everybody else along with you, right? You need to walk a path that's unique, but collective. So how do we do that? How do we bring all these people together and get them all rowing in the same direction, everybody clear on where we're going and how we're gonna get there? These could be anywhere from like, you know, the members of your team, but also executives, people you need to convince. They could be customers, they could be partners, uh, they could be consultants, or, you know, you could be part of an effort that's led by consultants and you're understanding, well, what, what are we doing here, right? So the first step is just bringing everybody together and getting everybody to uh, stay on the same page for more than 30 seconds. 
And I start that um, by working backwards from a target outcome, by mapping an outcome. I think it's incredibly powerful to start from where we want to get to and work backwards. So in this case, we want to work twice as fast. So the first thing that we think about um, is why is that important? Why should we be doing this and not everything else, right? Why is the right answer to go faster? Uh, maybe some people are thinking that, you know, we don't need to go faster. I'm already uncomfortable with the pace and I'd like us to improve quality. So we can have that conversation. We can be very clear about why is it really important for us to go faster. And that could be important to the organization. It could be important to the team, uh, the key stakeholder. It could be important to customers. Hopefully it's important to everybody, but we can be clear about why it's important to each of those groups and get that out and talk about it. The next thing to talk about is obstacles. What's gonna be in our way? What are we gonna trip over the moment we take our first step? What is the cliff that we're gonna walk right into and hopefully not off of, but we might get stuck? How can we understand how to get around those obstacles? And the first part about that is getting it out and talking about it. And then what we can start to do to start doing something about these challenges is investigations. What can we learn that's gonna help us avoid the obstacles or get to the outcome more effectively. And that brings us to one of my favorite investigations, which is value stream mapping. So if we wanna understand collective flow, it's an excellent practice to tackle that effort with value stream mapping. A value stream map is all about collective flow. And so what a value stream map is all about is laying out all the activities from start to finish of how we actually deliver value to customers. What is the workflow? What is the order of operations? And what's really important about this is the measurement aspect of this. So most process maps you've seen, they don't have measurement and that's why they're pretty useless because uh, they don't represent reality. They don't represent anything that's meaningful that is actionable. But a value stream map has data, it has measurement behind it. The way we get that data is we ask the team how long does this usually take to happen? How long does a request usually take to get into the system and be complete and accurate and, and, and uh, a solid starting point? And then we can go all the way through and capture this measurement. But the second dimension that's really valuable is delay timing. How long are people waiting in between these activities, either because it's handed off ineffectively or uh, you know, just not clear from one step to the next, and so it can take take time. But maybe we just don't have the right tooling or process to do those handoffs effectively, and the baton is being dropped in the relay race, or you know it's just taking too long to hand it off. What that gives us, this data gives us a focal point. It gives us, out of everything that we could be paying attention to, the one place in the value stream where everything seems to be piling up and, and slowing down. Um, or you know we're seeing the maximum impact in the value stream and in this case we're seeing this in environment setup we see this delay before environment setup probably because it gets handed off to somebody um, and it's not a smooth handoff and then it takes a week and then there's another long delay and so all in all this takes a major portion of the value stream if we were to fix this entirely which we probably can't get all the way to full automation but if we're addressing it we're going to be almost ex we're going to be almost at our target just by hitting this one constraint, which is fantastic, right? So we have a focal point, we have a starting point, we have something that's really going to pay off if we invest in it. That brings us to a dependency mapping because when we find a constraint, what's usually happening is that that constraint isn't something that the team controls. Otherwise, it probably would have been dealt with already. Um, but a lot of the reasons why we have these major constraints is that we have to go out of the team and wait for something and then we wait for it to come back um, and that can be a major source of constraint. So in this case we look at environment setup that actually is the case. We have something that we need from the data team, we have something that we need from the DevOps team and they're doing things that we can't do. Either we lack the capability or we lack the access or we lack you know the checks and balances or whatever it is. That means that we can't do it, they have to do it, we have to wait for them to do it. So we can clarify that understanding, dig into the details. We can go bring this map to them and help 
help everybody understand. You know, we think uh, this is a this is a major source of delay in our in our flow. Uh, what can you tell us about it? You know, what's happening in the step? Is there any way that it can happen differently? You can have that kind of that conversation very productively by bringing the map along or bringing them into the workshop. So the next thing that we look at is capability mapping because that can be another way of addressing constraints. It could be a way of breaking these dependencies. So we look at our specific dependencies in terms of capabilities. What are we getting from these teams? We're getting uh, data refreshed from production. We're getting it cleansed of all the sensitive information, put in a place that we can access it with a staging environment so that we can test our change uh, somewhere safe, but somewhere that resembles production. We also, for that to happen, need a environment to be spun up and provisioned to be like production. So we have to wait for that to happen. This is a policy. This is how we do things. So we can wait for it to happen. So let's look at maybe taking that on ourselves. Maybe there's a way that we can do that inside the team so that we don't have to wait for it to be done by somebody else. So let's look at the team. Who currently owns data? Who's in charge of data in the team? Nobody's in charge of data in the team. No wonder it's a dependency. No wonder it's a sore spot. Um, we have to go outside the team to get it because nobody inside the team owns it. Um, but in case of infrastructure, we've got some people who are managing our infrastructure from inside the team. Maybe they could start doing a little bit more. Maybe they could expand their access. Um, maybe they've been doing it long enough that the team is comfortable with them taking it on. We can look at that. We can have that conversation, right? We're getting this out so that we can have the conversations about what to do. But um, owners are great as long as they have backups. If there's nobody to support these people, if these people can't go on vacation, if they're not allowed to get sick, you're not going to be convincing uh, other teams to allow you to take over a capability that you can't actually support. So you have to make sure that you've got a backup for all these things. So now we're making it clear what our level of capability is so that we can address it effectively, right? So um, what's really important about capabilities is our skill level. Are we actually able to do this thing? So it turns out that we've got uh, pretty decent skills in terms of data. We have nobody who's like stepped up and owned it, but um, we're not doing too bad, so maybe we can bump that up. Uh, it looks like we're really good at standing up and tearing down environments. Maybe we have somebody with Terraform experience or some, some prior experience. Um, so that's fantastic. And validation, you know, testing environments, we have very low capability and we can be very clear about that. Uh, another important factor is resources. What level of support do we have for these things? And so we can see that you know, we have fairly good resources that can be API access, documentation, testing frameworks, all kinds of things that make that uh, skill um, supported and, and uh, sustainable. So we can be clear about that and all of that can be brought together in a score that helps us understand where we need the most help and where we might be able to actually break a dependency or mitigate a dependency effectively. So let's look at this from start to finish we're wrapping up here we start with an outcome maybe working backwards by defining value or destination and understanding how we're going to get there we look at what we're currently doing with a value stream map and we can define a future state value stream map as part of this as well what do we want the flow to look like what do we want that collective flow to look like we can also understand dependencies what's behind the constraints what are the things that are contributing to the delays and the impact on the flow we can understand the capabilities that we might need to address the dependencies or improve our performance and all of that can be brought together in a roadmap that makes it clear what we're going to tackle right now what we're going to leave till next and what we're going to do later and we can understand that from a couple of different dimensions. We can assign measures of progress to each of these things or ownership to each of these activities uh, to make it clear. Again, very visual, very clear, very easily communicated inside the team, outside the team. Whoever needs to understand these things can get uh, you know, the picture that's worth a thousand words and drive those powerful, effective conversations with these visual maps that help us understand 
how to do what we want to do. So if you're interested in more about this, there's an ebook at flow.visible.is. It'll take you through start to finish everything I've covered and more in great detail. There's also an email course that's going to come to you every day with a separate piece of the puzzle um, so that you can learn about this from end to end uh, and share it with your team. Also, if you're interested in collective flow, this idea of value streams, um, check out valuestreamshow.com. Myself and my co-author, Andrew Davis, were writing a book about this for IT Revolution, uh, your favorite book authors and uh, your favorite book publishing company. Hopefully, we'll be your favorite book authors and uh, you can follow along with a video podcast there. Thank you very much for joining me for the session.